From KWCH 12 Eyewitness News, this is a special report. Good evening. You're watching continuous coverage of severe weather sweeping across the state of Kansas. 90% of the town of Greensburg was destroyed by a tornado a little bit more than 24 hours ago last night. Tonight, another tornado has touched down in that same area. That is just one of many today, and by many, I mean a lot. Twisters have hit all these counties, 11 counties so far. Uh, in fact, 73 tornadoes have been reported across the Midwest today, dozens in Kansas. But we have not heard of any significant damage from tonight's storms. Emergency crews, though, are still out surveying, and the severe weather is not over yet. Here's a look at the system as it moved through Kiowa County earlier this evening. Storm Team 12 photojournalist Rob Shun captured tornado video. You can see right there, that's near Haviland. A uh, very classic rope tornado uh, getting all the way down to the ground a few miles from Haviland. This was about, uh, I would guess, uh, 7 o'clock this evening. Now another look at the same tornado from another angle. And you can see it uh, coming down from the clouds right there, fortunately hitting a... Uh, uninhabited area and uh, causing no major damage in that area. Again, this is just a few miles from Haviland. Right now, a curfew is in effect in the town of Greensburg. That started at 8 o'clock tonight, about two hours ago. Search and rescue has been called off for the night. Uh, simply, emergency crews are just too exhausted. They have been working for 24 hours now. They need some time to rest. Another reason for the curfew, law enforcement there is worried about looting. Anyone in the town of Greensburg after 8 o'clock will be arrested. Now, here's what we know about the uh, storm damage there. The National Guard says 90% of that town of Greensburg has been destroyed. We'll have more on the Greensburg situation in a moment. Let's right now uh, pick up on, uh, from Merrill Teller the latest on what's happening right now with more storms and tornadoes in Kansas. Merrill. Yeah, exactly right, Roger. And uh, the storm that I've been tracking for, folks, is moving into the southern sections of Barton County. Uh, just before the top of the hour, a funnel cloud was reported at Highway 281 on the Barton-Stafford County line. Let's take a look at live Storm Team 12 Super Doppler radar. And so let's update our storm track even uh, to that confirmed report on this. Again, it was a funnel cloud on 281 right at the uh, Stafford to Barton County line, continuing to move to the northeast at about 35 miles per hour. I think we can probably even update that a little bit further from this newer information. And uh, that means this thing is getting very, very close to Great Bend within the next couple of minutes. Uh, very near Claflin by about 1028. Odin at about 1030. Again, this is still a tornado warning for uh, Barton County until 1030 this evening. A funnel cloud has been sighted with the storm by law enforcement. And, uh, it's Ellsworth County. okay, Ellsworth, that's the storm that uh, Ross is... Uh, tracking. In fact, let's send it over to Ross now with new information on the storm there in Ellsworth. Okay, and uh, my biggest concern here was uh, the two potential areas of tornadic thunderstorm development. We're seeing that now. Uh, the latest report coming in, a tornado was reported on the ground by a storm chaser uh, four miles north of Bushton. That puts it in Ellsworth County. Now, Bushton itself, actually in the northwest corner of Rice County, but the report, uh, four miles north of Bushton, tornado on the ground, puts it in Ellsworth County. There's another tornado being reported, and this one is in the vicinity of Holyrood. So I told you about five minutes ago there were two areas of rotation, one near Holyrood, the other one southeast of Bushton. Well, we're seeing that confirmed now by the storm spotters and the storm chasers. Now, tornado spotted near Holyrood. Uh, if you're in Holyrood, you need to be in your tornado shelters. This storm moving northeast at 30 miles per hour. Uh, if it holds together, it is going to be headed down. Uh, that would be Highway 56 and headed for uh, the Ellsworth area. That would be Highway 156 headed for Ellsworth if the storm holds together. So a serious situation here. A tornado reported on the ground near the Hollyroot area. Also tornado reported four miles north of Bushton in the southern portions of Ellsworth County. Again, movement on this activity is to the northeast at around uh, 30 miles per hour. Now, we're not seeing... Uh, any kind of weakening with this storm. This has been a cell that we've tracked for hours on end, and it's still uh, holding together and still tracking in that northeastern movement. So across Ellsworth County, please remain in your tornado shelter. Merrill. Okay, Ross, and now we have another report from uh, the National Weather Service. The storm just to the south of Great Bend at the top of the hour, eight miles south of Great Bend. This now being reported as a tornado on the ground by law enforcement there, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. Uh, now would be just to the south 
south-southeast of Great Bend and would be crossing over uh, Highway 56 there. Um, when about 10.05. Well, it's 10.05 right now, so uh, maybe just a little bit fast on uh, that movement of the storm. But uh, nonetheless, folks in and around the Great Bend area, you do need to uh, continue, or if you haven't already, and you should have, uh, take your tornado precautions right now. A tornado has been reported on the ground, and it is headed toward the Great Bend area. Uh, with a little bit of luck, it goes just to the east of Great Bend over the course of the next five minutes or so. But again, you do need to continue with your tornado protection there in Great Bend and uh, over Barton County uh, as this tornado warning uh, continues for your area. Now, I want to uh, shift our view out a little wider and then move back into southwestern Kansas. We have those uh, severe thunderstorms that uh, I was showing you a little bit earlier down in eastern Mead, northwestern Clark County. Uh, we still have those storms. We've had a report of uh, one and a half inch sized hail uh, just before the top of the hour in western Clark County, about 19 miles northwest of Ashland. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, hail indicators, and you can see that there uh, still continuing to make its way on uh, to the northeast with that storm. Also, we still think there could be some uh, very strong winds associated with that storm making their way through uh, the central and northern sections of Clark County. And in fact, the Weather Service has now issued a severe thunderstorm warning for north central Clark and eastern Ford counties as these storms continue to move to the northeast at about 40 miles per hour, still with the potential of large hail and damaging winds. In fact, uh, let me see if I can get a quick uh, storm track into this area on the uh, northern end of that line in north central uh, Clark County uh, that would be putting this activity near Clark State Lake already uh, around Bloom at 10.08, Kingsdown at 10.15, the town of Ford in Ford County at 10.27, and then up toward the Spearville area around 10.47. Again, uh, this is severe thunderstorm warning for that area. Large hail has been reported and damaging winds still also a possibility. Ross? On the tornado warning that continues for Ellsworth County, uh, just getting a report about three minutes ago, trained weather spotters still reporting a tornado that was on the ground near Holyrood in this storm, uh, still showing no indication of weakening, and it continues on this northeast track, uh, taking it right up Highway 156. Now, it's still a ways away from Ellsworth, but the storm, again, has shown no indication of weakening, so if it continues on this path, it will reach the Ellsworth area, it looks like by around 1020, 1025 this evening, so head up from Ellsworth over toward Canopolis. Uh, Lorraine, uh, you're probably still in the path of this storm, but the uh, confirmed tornado that we had uh, reported was at 10.03 this evening in the area around Holyrood. Now, Bushton, we had a report uh, just before the top of the hour of a tornado that was on the ground four miles north of Bushton. What I see right now on the radar looks to be like some very strong winds that could be punching through Bushton as we speak. I would estimate winds maybe a 70 to 80 miles per hour in Bushton headed for Frederick. So this uh, thunderstorm going to be kicking out some very strong winds uh, out of head of the back part of the storm, which may eventually shut down the tornadic potential. But right now we still have a confirmed tornado that's on the ground in and around the Holyrood area, still moving to the northeast at around uh, 30 miles per hour. So Ellsworth, Canopolis, uh, Lorraine, all in the path of this storm. In fact, there you see a new uh, bit of imagery coming in on the radar, kind of on the edge of the Wichita National Weather Service radar. So I've been uh, looking at both Dodge City and the Wichita area, but you can still see the greens and the reds coming together around the Holyrood Lorraine area. So this to me uh, still the very most suspect area that we would have a tornado. And again, uh, storm spotters and chasers are confirming that it seems to be in the Holyrood area at this particular time. No reports of damage as of yet, uh, but this continues to be a dangerous storm. Merrill? And uh, the other tornado that we uh, are tracking now, just uh, now to the south-southeast of Great Bend, based on what I can see on Doppler radar, uh, continuing to move to the northeast. These storms really, when you get right uh, down to it, are not all that far apart from each other. But uh, this this one uh, looks like it should be uh, very close to Great Bend as we speak, uh, and hopefully with any luck, uh, the core of the storm continues on its current movement, uh, would move through the area in between Ellenwood and Great Bend. But again, folks in uh, those areas, Great Bend, uh, Ellenwood, you can see the storm then up toward uh, the Claflin area about 1034, Odin at 1036, uh, continuing to move on to the northeast through Barton County. So again, another very dangerous situation 
situation uh, for folks up in that area in Barton County. And uh, so we'll continue to uh, monitor these storms very closely. Anything more to add, Ross? Other than I'm just noticing uh, what could be some large hail about ready to move into the Ellsworth Canopolis area right now. Uh, maybe some hail on the order of a uh, golf ball size uh, headed back toward the Ellsworth Canopolis area. Of course, this in addition to the tornado warning that does continue, and storm spotters have confirmed a tornado in the area around Hollywood. We'll keep an eye on this storm. For now, we'll send it back over to Roger. All right, thanks, guys. We'll get back to you whenever it's warranted. Uh, there was great concern earlier this evening uh, when we were informed that the tornado sirens were not working in the Great Bend area. We've been told since, though, that that has been corrected, so one would assume those sirens are going off right now. Either way, we do ask you to take cover in uh, the Great Bend and Hollywood areas. Uh, our crews have been on the scene surveying the damage in Greensburg since before dawn. The most damage, that town, where 90 to 95 percent of the town has been destroyed. Tonight, that entire town was evacuated to shelters in Haviland. That's where Storm Team 12 reporter Jim Grayway is live tonight. Jim? Well, Roger, we've seen a lot of crying, comforting, and reflection here at the Haviland High School and the three other Red Cross shelters set up for Greensburg residents. About 200 of the town's 1,200 people are spending tonight in one of those shelters. That's about half as many as last night. That's pretty typical, according to Red Cross spokesman Peter Tian, that there are a lot fewer the second night. This video we shot at Barclay College, which was used for a shelter last night, but wasn't needed tonight. The Red Cross says generally about only 3 to 4 percent of disaster victims stay in shelters like this the first night, and then they make other arrangements, either stay with friends or family or stay in uh, motels. Although there may be some new people coming into these shelters tonight we're told by some Red Cross people here at this shelter because of some new storm damage in Truesdale this evening so this is certainly isn't anything like home for these people but they generally seem very grateful just to have a roof over their heads and food to eat the night after their town was destroyed Roger all right thanks Jim and here's what we know about the storm damage in Greensburg the National Guard tells us that 90% of the town was destroyed. All power, all phone lines, all utilities are down there. Nine people killed, eight of them in Kiowa County, one in Stafford County. More than 60 others were hurt. 16 are still in critical condition. And the damage in Barton County, also from last night, not counting what may be happening right now, last night's damage included farm sheds, houses, house windows, and shingles. An oil pumping station was blown over, oil tanks blown a quarter to a half mile away. A sheriff's deputy told us that crude oil was leaking into a stream. Uh, the Kansas Department of Health and Environment had a crew on the way to clean that up. Uh, Many of the people affected by last night's tornado are in the path of more severe weather tonight. Storm Team 12 reporter Kim Wilhelm is live with their story. Kim? Roger, in just the last few minutes, I have noticed that the wind in this area has started to pick up. We're also getting a little lightning, basically cloud to cloud uh, lightning right now. As you can imagine, though, the folks in this entire area very nervous, very worried that these storms just will not quit. Now, on top of trying to coordinate this massive search and rescue effort uh, today, emergency workers had to contend with the threat of round after round of severe weather tonight. Now, our crews managed to capture a rope tornado touching down between Greensburg and Haviland tonight. Night. That is just one of the many tense situations that came with the onslaught of these new storms. Now, as you can imagine, folks here are absolutely exhausted, absolutely exhausted. Many haven't even slept here since this tornado hit last night. Uh, but with how active these storms are, it may be a little longer before anyone here is able to do that. And again, this evening when we're talking about spotting storms, uh, we're dealing about doing it in the complete darkness again tonight. And that was the situation last night. Uh, folks here very nervous, uh, just waiting for this whole thing to finally come to an end. Roger. All right, thanks, Kim. Uh, the Red Cross has been very busy today. It sent three cantinas to feed emergency crews. As you can imagine, it's quite a big job. It's also set shelters for tornado victims and has been busy surveying the damage. Storm Team 12 photojournalist George Taylor was allowed to go along with some of those crews. It's just a freak of nature. The birds are all confused too. They can't find their trees. This pretty well put a big dent in Greensburg. What our main purpose is, we're with disaster assessment. And uh, what we're trying to accomplish today is to determine the number of uh, homes that were destroyed. 
This is the heaviest area here. We're usually the first ones on the scene to assess the damage. Bill and his gang's going to be over here. You guys want to take this section? Okay. I'm just amazed at the damage. We just look at the structure to see whether it's habitable. Looks like it's had some minor damage. It looks livable, possibly. Are not habitable. My God. Whether it can be repaired or not repaired. Pretty far gone. As far as what we can see. So it's not livable currently, but there's possibility that it could be with major repairs brought back to livable condition. And that way, that'll help us more in the way we can aid the, the person that lived there to uh, whether they need housing, whether they need uh, food, clothing. I think it's going to take time. It's, it's really sad. It's really heart rendering. To, to see what's happened to this great community. Red Cross will be here as long as they're needed. And again, that's from George Taylor, one of our fine photojournalists who works so hard. Speaking of working hard, I think he never sleeps. Let's go back to Chief Meteorologist Merrill Teller for the latest <laughs> on what's happening right now. Uh, I did get a couple of hours early this morning, and then my mother called. <laughs> and that took, care, that took care of that. Uh, adrenaline, I think, is flowing just a little bit in the weather office right now. Uh, just uh, very quickly, up in north-central Kansas, uh, severe thunderstorm warning now for north-central Republic County until 1045 this evening. Uh, storms in the uh, area just southeast of the town of Republic, about 20 miles north of Concordia, moving northeast at about 40 miles per hour. But we continue to watch the storm that's moving through the Great Bend area as we speak. It looks to me like uh, the the core of that storm is now passed uh, to the north of uh, Highway uh, 56 and continues to move on to the northeast. Besides for the possibility that there could still be a tornado with this storm, and uh, I don't have anything to confirm that there is one at the moment. Uh, also, very large hail indicated on Doppler radar uh, right now with this thunderstorm. So, uh, folks, to the northeast of Great Bend, as you head on back up toward Claflin and Odin, and you can see on our storm track uh, over the course of uh, the next 5 to uh, 20 minutes. Uh, more large hail is going to be a possibility in your area also. Uh, we've also been told that uh, although we would expect the tornado sirens should be sounding in Barton County since you're under a tornado warning uh, that they are not uh, going off at this point in time. But uh, certainly uh, that doesn't mean it's an all clear. You should continue with your tornado precautions in that area. With the other storm just to the northeast of there, back over to Ross. Seeing a new report coming down here, uh, four miles northwest of Claflin uh, in Barton County. Emergency manager reporting a tornado uh, and law enforcement reported two homes damaged in the town of Odin. Uh, also, some outbuildings were blown over as well. So now we're starting to see, in addition to the tornado reports, we are getting some damage now coming in. Again, that report was four miles northwest of Claflin in Barton County. We're still tracking this thunderstorm here in Ellsworth County that has a tornado warning associated with it. And although the rotation, we still see it from the Wichita radar. It's not, uh, well, there you can see some new radar imagery coming in. The reds and the greens still matching up. It looks to me like it's about a five miles southwest of Ellsworth now where we're still seeing the rotation. I haven't seen any confirmed uh, tornado reports in about the last uh, eight or ten minutes, but uh, this storm continues on a northeasterly track and is headed for Ellsworth, and eventually uh, Canopolis would be in the path of this storm as well, basically moving right down uh, Highway 156 here uh, directly uh, headed for the Ellsworth area, and again, uh, still have reason to believe that this uh, t storm is producing a tornado. I can look at it from the Topeka Weather Service radar. I can look at it from Wichita and Dodge City, and all three radar sources still show the same area about four or five miles southwest of Ellsworth uh, for there to be rotation. Again, this is Wichita we're looking at now. If we switch over to Dodge City, yep, there you still see the greens and the reds matching up uh, southwest of Ellsworth. This is Topeka that you're looking at, and still, there you see the hints of the reds and the greens close together southwest of Ellsworth. So that reason alone right there, three different radar sources uh, seem to be uh, pinpointing southwest of Ellsworth, about four miles uh, southwest of the town that uh, we could be looking at to the area of rotation. Of course, a lot of uh, people in this area know very well, uh, and it's a dangerous in the evening. You want to remain in your tornado shelters here as we continue to attract the storm across the heart of Ellsworth County. Hopefully uh, no uh, damage being done by this storm, but 
Doppler radar continues to show a very dangerous storm uh, tracking through this area. So tornado warning officially continues uh, for Ellsworth County until 1030 this evening. We'll have to wait and see how this storm progresses over the next 10 or 15 minutes. But to be quite honest, I have a hard time believing that this storm is going to just totally collapse and die off in the next 10 minutes. So we may see an extension of the tornado warning for Ellsworth uh, County. It looks like uh, we are still seeing some strong winds that could be in the Bushton Geneseo areas uh, on the leading edge of this storm. We may see some strong winds winds on the order of 70 to 80 miles per hour. So some strong winds, tornadic potential closing in on the Ellsworth area. We'll continue to watch this uh, very closely. And I believe uh, Merrill maybe has some more information now on the storms in the Great Bend area. We'll send it back over to you. Uh, yeah, it looks to me like uh, that uh, storm continuing to uh, indicate some rotation. Now uh, off to uh, the northeast of Great Bend by about uh, oh, six or seven miles now. And uh, that rotation is in the uh, midst of all this heavy rainfall. So uh, for folks who might be hoping well, maybe we can go out and, uh, you know, see it, uh, when it when it's illuminated by the lightning. Forget about that. Uh, this is what uh, we call a rain-wrapped storm. Now, again, we haven't... Uh haven't had any confirmed reports of uh, further torna tornadoes on the ground uh, with this storm, but certainly uh, still the possibility as some rotation is still being indicated in this area. So, folks, again, up toward Odin, Claflin, uh, you do need to continue with your tornado precautions at this time as uh, this storm is still showing signs of rotation uh, at the moment. Now, we'll uh, widen out our view once again, show you this part of a line of significant storms from the storm that Ross has been talking about up in Ellsworth County and all the way back down through uh, the Clark County area, once again into southeastern Meade County, as well as the eastern sections of Ford County. And that's the area that I want to uh, go into now because eastern Ford County, your severe thunderstorm warning has been extended until 11 o'clock tonight. You can see these very intense storms likely producing large hail, possibly damaging winds from Ford over just moving in on Buckland. And then from there, southwestward uh, across the western sections of Clark County and uh, just into the far eastern sections of Meade County right now. We'll uh, put this uh, activity into motion and you'll be able to see the movement uh, continuing to be for the most part as almost all the storms have been today to the northeast. And I've just noticed these uh, other couple of storms that uh, have developed just around into the south of uh, Ensign. Those are moving uh, now through the southwestern corner of uh, Ford County. Uh, no indication as of yet of uh, anything uh, with that of a severe nature, but uh, certainly something uh, still that uh, warrants keeping a close watch on. That's a half an hour ago, Mark. That's old news. Uh, but again, uh, eastern Ford County, new, t new severe thunderstorm warning until 11 o'clock. Uh, we also continue with uh, severe thunderstorm warnings uh, northeastward up that line uh, until 1030, so about another seven and a half minutes for southwestern Pawnee and northwestern Edwards County. Uh, that would be for the storms that you see in here from around Garfield down through uh, Kinsley and into uh, the southwestern corner of Edwards County. And uh, then uh, north central Clark County also still under a severe thunderstorm warning until 1045. Uh, Ross? Has yeah, as you're still tracking the storm here through Ellsworth County. Don't really have any new information other than what we brought you a little bit uh, earlier here with the damage reported uh, northwest of Claflin. Uh, that report was actually from the tornado just after 8 o'clock this evening, so that could have been from uh, one of our earlier reports uh, from the Barton County area. But uh, we continue to watch this storm here move through the Ellsworth County area. In addition to the threat for tornadoes, we'll switch over into the hail mode, and you can see the purples and the pinks showing up right over Ellsworth. Uh, there could very well be some very large hail in in Ellsworth as we speak. Uh, difficult to determine maybe how large, but it could be uh, larger than one inch, maybe upwards of golf ball size uh, falling in Ellsworth right now, along with some strong winds. But it still looks like if we have a tornado in association with the storm, it's still southwest of town, about a couple miles, and it is moving to the north and east. So residents in Ellsworth uh, should remain uh, in their tornado shelters. Merrill. All righty. Thank you, Ross. And uh, we also have the potential for flooding in a number of areas. Flash flood warnings are in effect for a Barton, Lincoln, and Russell County, uh, as well as for Ellsworth County, and flood warnings for urban areas and small streams in effect for Edwards, Southern Pawnee, and Stafford counties. I also understand we have some new reports of some damage from earlier this evening, and we'll send it back to Roger Cornish. All right. Thank you, guys. Governor Sebelius is expected to arrive in Greensburg tomorrow to view the damage. She has been in touch with President Bush by phone today, asking him to declare Greensburg a federal disaster area. 
Senator Pat Roberts, along with Congressman Todd Tehart and Jerry Moran, all got a first-hand look at the damage. We spoke with Senator Roberts earlier tonight. Uh, I was uh, in touch with the president uh, late this afternoon. We have now learned from the White House that uh, he will sign uh, the request uh, by the governor as soon as he receives it, uh, and we'll be making that announcement uh, tomorrow uh, should he receive the governor's request. Uh, so that there will be a federal uh, declaration uh, of uh, extra program that will include assistance programs that we think will be of great help uh, to that county, to Cairo County, uh, and to Greensburg. Uh, and I expect the governor to send that request within about a half an hour. So uh, I think uh, we're going to get this done in record time. That will mean that FEMA will move in immediately and be of immediate help uh, to the people of uh, to the people of Greensburg. And the president, uh, I spoke with him for about 10 minutes, and uh, uh, he again expressed his, uh, his great sorrow and extended his prayers. Uh, but to move it this fast, I think, is remarkable. Uh, but it, it, it just shows you uh, uh, just how serious the deficit is. Uh, very quick action on the part of the governor and the president and all of us concerned. That's Senator Pat Roberts, who got a first-hand look at the uh, devastation today and said it was just stunning to see it in person. In uh, speaking of the federal government, FEMA is sending help to tornado victims. That includes three trailer loads of water, enough for 5,000 people. A simple thing, but awfully important in a situation like this. Three trailers of ready-to-eat meals, enough to feed 1,500 people three meals a day for five days, and 2,500 tarps. FEMA is also sending a mobile emergency operations vehicle. It will be in Greensburg by about 4 a.m. and up and operating early tomorrow morning. Soldiers and airmen from the Kansas National Guard are assisting with security, communications, and shelter missions. The 134th Air Control Squadron is supplying two generators to assist in search and rescue operations and about 1,500 gallons of water. 18 light sets from the 184th Air Refueling Wing have also been sent to Greensburg that will provide light for response and recovery operations. The Pratt, Kansas National Guard Armory has been opened as a staging area for logistic support. The Kansas Highway Patrol is also assisting with reestablishing communications and public safety issues. The Kansas Department of Transportation has provided roadblocks and signs to keep unauthorized people from entering the area. KDOT is also involved in clearing debris from highways so rescue vehicles can get into the affected areas. They talked earlier today about uh, the really tremendous problems they had with debris and just being able to get around and get to the areas. All the resources are in place today, but they were not last night when the tornadoes first hit. About 1,500 people live in Greensburg. There were not enough emergency personnel to respond to all the victims after the tornado. Some residents jumped in to help their neighbors. Storm Team 12 reporter Kim Hines has one of their stories. Kim? Well, Roger, it was just over 24 hours ago that a lot of the people came out of their homes dazed and confused by what happened. And today, here at this shelter, they shared their stories of survival and one man's story of how he helped save some of his neighbors in his Greensburg, neighbor Greensburg neighborhood. After the tornado tore through Greensburg, Jason West heard calls for help. They were his neighbors. One of my neighbors was laying down on the floor of their house. The other one was buried in rubble. So West started digging. Seen his head, and then we seen his back, and I touched him to see that was him. It was, but West couldn't easily pull him out because something was caught on his neighbor's neck. Two before he had electric cord wrapped around his neck. Eventually, West got the cord free, saving his neighbor's life. Put him on my shoulder and walked out of the rubble and. Took him to the driveway. He went to the hospital and West now waits in a shelter. In Havland, Kim Hines, KWCH 12 Eyewitness News. Now, Wes was hoping to get to Larnard tonight to go stay with his mother-in-law so he would not have to stay in the shelter, but this shelter will be open for as long as people need it. Roger. All right, thank you, Kim. All day we've been receiving calls and emails from people searching for family members. Here's how you may be able to track them down. The Red Cross is coordinating a list of people currently in shelters. The number to call, 620-272-3651. Again, 620-672-3651. 
They can maybe tell you where your family members are. Or you can log on to disastersafe.redcross.org. That is lowercase, disastersafe.redcross.org. And there you can search by name for family members or people you know who may have been involved in this uh, disaster. Some people did evacuate and are staying with people in the area. If you're one of them, we assume you may not be watching us right now, but we encourage you, if you are, to call the number there also, the same one, or register at the website so your family members can find out that you are safe.